16 and his white t-shirt tied to it to surrender to our own fucking troops wow that poor guy's been through some shit man so is mike callahan the pirate because obviously you are yeah. the uh, narrator in the dialogues as yeah mm -hmm. i assume you base this off of the platonic socrates dialogues where you cast yourself as socrates or no i wasn't smart enough to be socrates in fact he was socrates i was the learner i was the student the learner the oh wow okay yeah. so you have studied the classics then yeah yeah some and yeah that's a really good concept i really enjoyed this one a lot so yeah. i'm glad you liked it man it was too short you know i had people tell me this thing needs another 20 chapters kevin and i'm like well i didn't record that many conversations between us so i couldn't do that oh oh wow so these are actually okay i thought it was 100 percent fiction that you <laughs> uh you wrote both sides of the story but wow okay yeah both of us both of us had those discussions now I, I may not have gotten everything perfectly verbally correct but they were definitely based on real discussions we had uh, did you happen to read the chapter about how he feels about welfare and stuff yet yes work and welfare yes uh, there's a what, lot of that in there so what did you think about that what did you think about his viewpoint on that uh, yeah I, I don't agree with it at all but that's me, mm -hmm. though. I mean, his view was basically, if you can't take care of yourself, you should die. And, and I think he actually carried that view. Yeah, I don't agree mm -hmm. with that at all, obviously. But neither do you, mm -hmm. I would think. But. No, I don't. We, we definitely debated that one for a while. But, you know, he, he was brought up in a, in a kind of a tough environment. His dad was a theologian. So he studied the Bible his whole life. That's what he did for a living. And... Uh, poor Mike that he was torn you know because he committed every sin in the book and uh, you want to know why he really used to hang out with me Barco you want some truth on this show no I don't no go ahead well I'm uh, gonna do it anyway I, I, I was so, about uh, I, I have a question for you after this frogs keep coming up in all these dialogues I don't know why but yes I don't know why either we um, it just happened I mean neither one of us was particularly enthusiastic about frogs but if you think about a frog and how hard its life is it's cold it bumps its ass every time it jumps and then when it stands up it looks like a 95 year old man it has no ass okay so the frog has many things against it at the outset not uh, notwithstanding uh, 10 year old boys with nets yes. but I think the frog was a uh, representation for our fears in the story you know, that's, are we going to become good. like the frog, cold and alone, and chased by ten-year-old boys? Yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, the the frog's mame, and also the whole idea mm -hmm. of uh, employment as slavery, which I believe yes. your character advocated, which his character did mm -hmm. not agree with. Yes, so that was a very good dialectic there. So, yeah, I thought so too. I still so, see employment as slavery. It's just modern slavery. They treat you well, and uh, you know, you trade your labor for uh, goods. But yet you let, mm -hmm. yet you let Mike the pirate win that debate. By the way, so uh, he he won it on his own merit, man. He he kicked my ass on that one. Okay, that's but you the know, other. He, because I was I was only half his age. Remember, I was twenty four when he was forty eight. It's very easy to remember because of the numbers. And the reason he used to hang out with me is because one, he was in love with my sister, who broke up with him. I have four sisters, so he was engaged to one, and she broke up with him when how can i put this well it's truth on tap but she was using it okay she's the black sheep in our family and he wanted her back he never stopped loving that woman but he thought hanging out with me would get him not only possibly closer to her again but i actually was a pretty handsome dashing dude when i was younger and he oh, would you think are. that yeah, hanging out with me would get him chicks Okay, yeah. well, yeah, that, that's the opposite of how, how I think it works. I always thought we're supposed to hang out with less attractive people, you know? That's what I thought. That's what I thought. Uh, I think uh, the buzzword is probably my favorite chapter, though, because it's 100% dialogue. Mm -hmm. Some of the other ones, it seems like you grafted on kind of an introductory paragraph that doesn't flow quite yeah. as well, but... Yeah, I definitely made some literary mistakes there and going from the topic of the uh, chapter to the content sometimes. But do you, what do you think about the buzzwords? Here are the buzzwords that drive me nuts, guys, and they still do. Uh, so you're talking to somebody and they go, right? Yes. Get that one. Yeah, Fuck yeah. that. Why does that piss me off? That pisses you off, too? Yeah, uh, especially while well, girls do that a lot. They'll do their mm -hmm. oh, right, like, which is yeah. their way of saying, uh, whatever you said, I'm not sure what I agree with, but please don't talk about it anymore. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. It's like... <laughs> 
Right, yeah. Uh, hey, did you ever get any closure on those concert tickets by any chance? Uh, yeah, there are a lot of other people, and I mean, it, it's all still... I mean, there's no way I'm going to get my money back, but we might actually be able to track down the individual because what happened is the the, mu- the music garage who sold the ticket says they know who they, they sold it to. So they're tracking that person down. They're getting back to us. So Good. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it kind of sucked because what happened is mm-hmm. I, I was going to the Riot Fest anyhow, and some friends from Detroit were like, hey, we want to go. We came into town. So mm-hmm. we're on Craigslist, and I find these cheap tickets. I meet up with the guy, and I buy the tickets, and we show up at the gate, and it's like... No go. So, uh, and then I was just like, okay, well, we're gonna have to do something else all weekend. So, yeah. that would piss me off too, bro. I'm sorry that happened to you. I, I hate people that do that. I hope they get a special kind of treatment in prison. I, uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it was a you know interesting experience. We ended up going to uh, because they were staying out by. It was really hard to get a hotel that last weekend. Mm-hmm. So they, they they came in and I was like, well, you can't really stay with me. So you gotta you know stay out at a hotel. We put them out a hotel by O'Hare. So I, after the after get I went out there, hung out. I went to some bars on the far west side of Chicago, which you can mm-hmm. still smoke in, which is really weird. You can still smoke wow. cigarettes in. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like there's these little pockets of Chicago where, you know, it's almost anarchic. You know, you can mm-hmm. have a cigarette, dude. It's like okay, so. <laughs> How, what are the smoke? What are the smoking rules at restaurants and bars in Virginia? Uh, Virginia's pretty much outlawed everything. I mean, they're they're just getting to where they might outlaw you smoking on public streets. Yeah. So, uh, I think after hours clubs allow it. If you are a member, quote unquote, yeah, then you can do what you want in there: snort lines, smoke pot. Well, yeah, but yeah. you know, they end up getting raided and busted. So, yeah, I mean, I I I work for large companies downtown Chicago, and it's like the people who mm-hmm. smoke. It kind of depends on the company. I know at like one company, like because a lot of people smoked, it, it wasn't as regarded as such a abhorrent behavior. You weren't ostracized as much. But the place I work at now, which is, I mean, I'm 43, and most people that work there are younger than me, except for the group I work in, mm. only smokers. So it's like if you smoke, you're kind of regarded. I, I don't smoke, but most mm. people who do smoke are regarded as kind of what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, ostracized or um, yeah. Outcast. Yeah, outcast. Yes, exactly. There you go. Yeah, it's yeah, and it's kind of like I've well, seen that man, and it's not really there. You know, mm-hmm. actually, I think they're probably just as productive and you know happy as anybody else. So why do you have to treat them that way? Yeah. Well, probably I think a lot of it has to do with this huge campaign against smoking that's found its way into the media. But it's also the smell. People hate the way of smoke smells on other people. So why not, let not people vape non-smokers? Then? Why not let people vape at their cube or their desk or in their office? Which That's what they should do. But there's enough doubt created by modern media that, oh, there are aluminum particles and all kinds of shit they say are in vape uh, smoke, nothing. which is ridiculous. Just Even water. if there's three or four carcinogens in it, uh, there's 4,000 in a cigarette. You know? Yeah, and also you're, you're probably in a big building surrounded by taxi mm-hmm. cabs that are polluting the air a lot yep. more. So, yep. If if they measured what was worse for you, a cubic foot of air behind a taxi cab or a cubic foot of air near a vapor, I'll bet you the taxi cab would win every time. Yeah, and if if they could vape at their desk or their cube, they wouldn't have to go. You know, we're on the twenty third floor. They have to go all the way down to the street. They have to swipe. They have to go through security. You know, nowadays you mm-hmm. just can't walk into an office building. You go, it's like, why don't yeah. you just let them vape at their desk? I don't think it's going to hurt anybody. They would probably be more productive. Yeah. But so absolutely. Do you, so, do you vape or smoke? I, actually, I do both. You wouldn't believe it right now, but uh, hanging around my neck on a paracord leash is a is an e-cigarette, and in my right hand, between my index finger and middle finger, is a Marlboro Special Blend. And isn't that a bitch? You know, because it, whenever I think about it, I say, "Oh, I, I should vape and not smoke." But if I'm not thinking through habit, I go and light the cigarette. So it's stupid. I mean, we all know it's stupid to smoke. It's gonna get you. You're lucky if you can recover. I mean, I've smoked since I was a kid, man. I don't even know how I played high school football. I just, I guess the, you know, being young and healthy other than the smoking was enough to get me through. But it's so stupid, and it's such a strong addiction, Barco. It's it's like the one time I quit, there are two times I quit. One was in Air Force Basic, like I told you before, and the other time was for eight hours where I tried to quit. I felt like my best friend had died. There, There's a very strong psychological marriage to the feeling a cigarette gives you when you're a smoker. And a lot of people don't understand. They think it's just the nicotine. And if it was just the nicotine, then the gum or the patch should get you right on through. But it fails. It fails again and again. 
Yeah. So there's something else. Maybe it's some more of the carcinogens. Maybe there's five or ten carcinogens in a cigarette that we're really addicted to. And that's why vaping can't easily and quickly replace smoking because it doesn't. it's missing something. Ask anybody that just started vaping. They're like, eh, I like it, but it's not quite a cigarette. Yeah. So I, there's something missing. I I mean, yeah, I agree. And, I mean, uh, um, for some reason I managed to grow up without smoking cigarettes at a young age. And I was told that if you don't smoke before the age of 20, it really mm-hmm. won't become part of your, you know, DNA or your addiction or whatever. I smoked in college yeah. because actually nicotine helps you with your short-term memory, helps you with alertness. Yes. It has a lot of positive <laughs> Yeah. things out there but one yeah. thing I would say is if, if this is strange but my experience people who smoke should probably not stop smoking I actually think the the, the worst case scenario is if you smoke for a long time and then you stop mm. and if you can stay stopped fine but if you smoke stop and start up again I think that's when the cancer comes in is what I've experienced and seen a lot so uh, I didn't know about that, but it sounds reasonable. I know they say that alcoholics and drug addicts, when they quit and go back, uh, the level, first of all, they catch right up to their old tolerance level, and they generally surpass it. So they start taking more of whatever they didn't need as much of before after they've quit for a while. Well, So it sounds reasonable. Yeah, I think, well, Peter Jennings was the ABC news anchor who died from, and he, he had stopped smoking mm-hmm. prior to 9-11. The 9-11 mm-hmm. happens, he starts smoking again. And he was actually a pretty honest guy, but he says he really feels like, you know, starting smoking again is kind of what induces the cancer. So, and in terms yeah. of my own family and relatives, those who just keep smoking ever, you know, relentlessly never have a problem. Those who try to stop and kick back into it, that's where the yeah. cancer seems to come in. Maybe something about your biology. I don't know. It could be. You know, my grandpa smoked from the age of 10 years old to 59 years old. Never had a lung problem after he quit. He died at 89 of a complication. Pneumonia set in after a stomach surgery. Uh, but, I, I mean, I guess you could say that was possibly related to smoking, but his lungs were clear and free when, when he died. But he never and, came uh, back to smoking is what you're saying, though. Yeah, he never came back. Once he put him down at 59 years old, he, he never started again. See, to me, that's... You know, Based on what I've heard, I, if, I'm not a smoker, obviously, but if I were, I'd have, a, I'd be very concerned about stopping smoking because I'd be worried that mm-hmm. if, if I stopped for like, if I stopped for uh, three years, five years, or ten, whatever, if I came back to it, then that's when the cancer I think might be coming in. So I'd be worried. Yeah. I mean, yep. Why? Well, it's entirely possible. It sounds like that they need to head a study on that. It, what are the dangers of quitting and starting again versus continuing to smoke? Yeah, and based on what you know, you learn in biology, you know these kind of things. Mm-hmm. It seems kind of reasonable to assume that you know, the you know the catalytic aspect of cessation mm-hmm. versus re re upping is very much yeah. true. So, but it yeah. sounds like you kind of need the tobacco because of your back pain and all that, though. It, it I swear to God, it helps a lot. If if I'm all other things being equal, if I'm sitting there hurting and I smoke a cigarette, there is some reduction in pain that could be completely psychological because I'm feeling the satisfactory buzz from the nicotine and the other chemicals, or there may be some direct relationship between the neurons that are receiving the pain signals and the and the interaction of the smoke uh, in my blood that gets to my brain, and I don't know, you know, but it does seem to help, and I realize it's not a good trade-off, so you're going to trade a, li- a little bit of pain relief for your lungs it's not a good trade-off but uh, when you're looking for positives about smoking that's about one of three things i can think of the other is like you said it can help you increase your focus and concentration oh yeah and and the other thing is it it feels really like a friend i i don't know how to describe it other than to say it's like um you can be all alone and smoke a cigarette and then not feel alone it's very strange you know it's just a tobacco and rolled up in paper but something about the drug something about the combination of chemicals and these nasty cigarettes uh is hyper addictive and to me it's not the physical i had no problem when i quit smoking and basic training but as soon as i got out i bought a carton of cigarettes what idiot does that wow that's idiotic you've quit for six weeks you're clear and free of nicotine you go out the first night you get to colorado and you buy a carton of cigarettes that's idiotic yeah, but, the, I th- I think but it's. But I was just going to say that that speaks to the strength of the psychological connection I had even then with cigarettes. But I got to quit soon. I got to just go straight over to vaping and deal with those few carcinogens rather than the thousands you get in cigarettes. 
But, but Barco, do you do a show? We never talk about your show. I, I know yeah, you yeah, used yeah, to. I did a five-hour show last night. You were there, Kevin, weren't you?